Hey, what's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. We've got the latest on Cody Bellinger. Where will Belly sign? Are the Dodgers still interested? We're going to dive into that in just a second. But quick reminder for all latest Dodgers news and rumors all off season long. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, some of your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day one where will belly sign and two where should belly sign where would you sign if you're cody bellinger and do you think the dodgers should still try to bring him back let me know down below and for all latest dodgers news head over to dodgersnation.com so forget bay watch this is belly watch and the last few seasons have been a belly flop for the 2019 nl mvp for the rookie of the year the multi-time all-star and you know i bring my facts to the fight. So let's dive into Cody Bellinger's numbers to see just how much he's fallen off in the last three seasons. From 2017 to 2019, in 450 games, Cody Bellinger hit 278, hit 111 home runs, that's 37 per season, had a 368 on base percentage, a 559 slugging percentage, and a 144 OPS plus. So 100 is league average, and his bat was 44% above league average in his first three years combined. Now you compare that to 2020 to 2022 in 295 games, Cody Bellinger has hit 203, 41 home runs, a 272 on base percentage, a 376 slugging percentage, and a 74 OPS plus. So when it comes to offensive production, his bat has been 26% below league average in the last three seasons combined. And why is that? Well, I've been watching a lot of video on Cody Bellinger the last few weeks. I'm going to drop a video in a few weeks about his rise and fall with the Dodgers. And with Belly, his contact quality and amount of consistent contact have dipped significantly. His plate discipline has gotten worse. And the reason for that is because his swing has slowed down so much that he's forced to swing earlier to give himself a chance to catch up with the pitch. And the lack of strength in his front shoulder has slowed his bat speed down considerably. As a result of the slower bat at speed, he's not making contact or squaring up pitches he did earlier in his career. He has less and less time to recognize the pitch. You just aren't seeing that fast twitch belly like we saw early in his career before all of the injuries. And yes, his numbers were trending in the wrong direction in the last part of the 2019 season. But still, if you look at his numbers in 2020, he still was an above average bat. He still posted a 112 OPS plus and hit 12 home runs in 230 13 at-bats in that shortened 2020 season. And then, of course, the shoulder injury after he hit the home run in Game 7 of the NLCS off Chris Martin. He's rounding the bases. And then when he sees Kike Hernandez at home plate, they're so excited that they bang shoulders. And that's what ultimately led to Belly having to undergo surgery in the offseason. But I do want to point out that even with that dislocated shoulder, he was still able to hit a home run in the following series in the World Series against the the Tampa Bay Rays and then he did come back in 2021 and he struggled throughout the season but in the postseason he was able to put it all together and had a 907 OPS had some big hits during that run so he has had some success he hasn't gone full Chris Davis as of yet and guys like Adrian Gonzalez have talked about it sometimes it takes two seasons to fully recovery from shoulder surgery to fully get that power and strength back and bat speed back but what really set belly back was that hairline fracture in his left leg the following season because what that did is that put his lower body at risk and when you look at his at-bats it just looks like they're out of sync the upper body and the lower body it just hasn't looked like they've been on the same page and belly just hasn't been able to find that consistency and that rhythm at the plate and that's why it looks overmatched by so many fastballs up in the zone breaking balls away and look his play discipline has taken a hit and you probably wonder why is that well that's because he has an issue making contact and that's because he is just not fully there he has been a shell of himself at the plate and what i think has happened on top of everything else is his confidence has been shaken to the core he is a broken belly at the moment when you go from a rookie of the year winner a gold glove winner a multi-time all-star a league mvp to one of the worst bats in the league then your confidence is going to be shaken like yogi bear 
Harris said, this game is 90% mental, the other half physical. So I think all these are contributing factors to why he's fallen off so precipitously. And hopefully he gets an opportunity with the club where he can just take a deep breath, play ball, have a lot less pressure on his shoulders, and go out there and prove that he still has the ability to be a starting outfielder in Major League Baseball. Maybe someday an all-star once again. It would be a great story, but you have to take belly steps. And I think the team out there that I would like to see Cody Bellinger sign with is a team like the Colorado Rockies or the Cincinnati Reds. And the Colorado Rockies are reportedly interested in signing Cody Bellinger as are 11 teams. That is what John Heyman reported today in the New York Post. Heyman wrote, Cody Bellinger has interest from 11 teams following the Dodgers' decision to non-tender him. He was expected to get $19 million in arbitration. The Astros, Cubs, and Giants are among teams in play. Bellinger will seek a one-year deal to reset his value. So first and foremost, let's break out that Dodgers rumor meter. And for this rumor, I will give it a three Dodger dogs. I do think there is some serious smoke here. You do have to consider the fact that it is John Heyman, who is Scott Boris's mouthpiece, who is Cody Bellinger's agent. So I definitely think that that's in play here. But I do think there are teams out there that are interested in him. And if you're Cody Bellinger, you do want to sign a one-year deal. What did I say a few months ago when a lot of people were suggesting that maybe he signs a multi-year deal with the Dodgers? I said no way that will happen because Cody Bellinger still wants to hit free agency at the same age he was always going to, at the same time he was always going to. And if you do sign a one-year deal and you prove yourself on the field, you still can put yourself in a position to get a nice payday. I think a $200-plus million deal is out of the picture for Cody Bellinger. But, hey, if he turns it around and he gives you 35 home runs and plays above average defense, there's no reason why he can't get a deal that's in the ballpark of 80 to 100 plus million dollars. And I definitely think that is still a best case scenario for Cody Bellinger at this point. But I want to see him go to a team where Maybe he's able to sign with the Rockies or the Reds, like I talked about a few minutes ago, and he has some success, and maybe he does benefit from playing in a hitter's park, somewhere like the Rogers Center in Toronto or Coors Field in Colorado or the great American ballpark in Cincinnati. And yes, when you're failing to make contact and you're swinging and missing a lot and you're rolling over to the right side on harmless ground balls, a hitter's park isn't going to help you. But next season, you have the restriction on the shift, and I think just Mentally, knowing it is a hitter's park, maybe that could just help his psyche just a little bit. Look, you need every edge you can in this game, but I am hoping that a team is able to sign him and then maybe he gets traded to a contender at the deadline. And if that happens, no team could offer him the qualifying offer so he could be in the best position to get a nice deal. But the Astros being mentioned, just imagine if I told you in 2019 that Cody Bellinger would be a Houston Astro, a Houston Trastro, or a a San Francisco Giants. I think Farhan Zaidi might take a flyer on Cody Bellinger when you consider that cavernous outfield, so much ground to cover, and the fact that, yeah, he likes his upside. I think I could see him in San Francisco. That would be a very interesting move, but I really like the idea of him playing in Colorado. Not a lot of pressure. You have a hitter's park, legalized marijuana, Bruh. and he can go out there and just play his best baseball and try to get himself back to where he was. Try to reestablish himself, not as an all-star we're not there yet but as a competent everyday outfielder at the plate we know defensively he is above average although when you look at his numbers in center field he's not as great as people bill him out to be he definitely is only a gold glover right now in right field in my opinion and not in center field but what the league needs to see from him is that he can be more consistent at the plate you don't want to see those long slumps and that is belly's issues he goes through these long dark slumps you wanted to see more consistency and really keep those slumps to a minimum while still being able to give you 25 plus home runs. That is the recipe for success for Cody Bellinger. Bring back 2018 belly and he'll be just fine. I think Colorado, if you look at their center field right now, they have a glaring need for an upgrade. I think the upside of Cody Bellinger could be something very enticing for the Rockies because if you look at that center field right now, Gritchuk last season, he slashed 259, 299, 425 with an 88 WRC plus. You compare that to Cody Bellinger. Belly had an 83 WRC plus. And then you got Daza who hit 301 last season.
season, but had a slugging percentage of just 384. So their center fielders last season for the Rockies combined for a 65 WRC plus playing in Colorado. So I do think the Rockies make a lot of sense. It's a division he's familiar with, he's comfortable with. It's close to where he's from in Arizona. If he, his wife still wants to live in LA, we know she's a model. That's not too far. It's not like you're going all the way back east or anything like that. And then let's say he does have success, which I alluded to earlier. Maybe he does get traded to a contender and he shows himself out to be Mr. October again. We got Code Tober and he comes through in the postseason and then he's in a great position to get a nice deal. I think that's the best fit for Cody Bellinger, the Colorado Rockies. And then are, there are some teams out there too that are interested that could make sense like the Chicago Cubs, the Toronto Blue Jays, the Astros. We know that they do a good job with reclamation projects as well. They have a great eye for talent. And then you also have teams out there like the San Francisco Giants. And will he go to San Francisco? That remains to be seen. I think offensively, I wouldn't want to be in San Francisco if I was Cody Bellinger. But I do think that he's going to be on the move. And from what I've been told, what I'm hearing is it is extremely unlikely that he will be back with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Like I said a few months ago, the only way for Cody Bellinger to be back with LA is if they did not non-tender him. Well, they did non-tender him, and he will not be back in L.A. It's extremely unlikely at this point. So I anticipate he signs a one-year deal anywhere from 8 to $12 million, probably $10 million with incentives on a one-year contract. You won't see any kind of club option because why would he want to do that? Because if he has success, then he won't be able to enter free agency. So he'll be looking for a one-year deal, and that's exactly what he'll sign. And I think the Rockies make a lot of sense right now, and I don't anticipate him re-signing with the Dodgers. But let me know down below in the comments section, where do you think Cody Bellinger will sign and where do you think he should sign and should the Dodgers bring him back? Let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all latest Dodgers news and rumors all off season long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you really want to support the channel and see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.